Hello, viewer. Welcome to our program, Take on Tech. This week, we are going to look at the topic of cybersecurity and what it means for Kenyans. Take on Tech is a program that explores technological issues and how they affect Kenyans, ordinary Kenyans, and how ordinary Kenyans can also interact and engage with experts of topical technological issues. We want you to engage with us, we want you to engage with the audiences, and for us to do that, I take you over to Jane to give us our social media handles. Over to you, Jane. Thank you, Grace. Warm welcome once again to Take on Tech. My name is Jane Womboy Kibera. Now, as aforementioned, in today's discussion, we'll be putting a focus on the state of cybersecurity here in Kenya. Now, we're living very fast. information and consumer with what we are giving out out there, especially on the online platform. Now, just looking at some recent stats, when you look at the social media platform, on Facebook, personal information and doing business. On Twitter, there are about 700,000 people um, so, so bad. My name is Grace Gidaiga. I am your host for this program. Uh, Cybersecurity continues to be a concern uh, in this country. It affects businesses. It's affecting <coughs> the tech industry, the service providers, civil society, and practically everyone. Um, and this is because it has implications on our information security, on our critical infrastructure, and even on our public safety. So we are going to be looking into this uh, topic of cybersecurity and its implications um, to citizens of this nation. To help us unpack uh, the issues, I have in the studio uh, John Walubengo. John Walubengo is a lecturer uh, at Multimedia University of Kenya, and he's also a columnist with one of our uh, daily newspapers. Uh, Joseph Madenge, uh, is from Seriano. Seriano is an organization that specifically focuses on cybersecurity and produces the annual report of cybersecurity, not only in Kenya, but in other African countries. And to help us also unpackage legal and legislative issues, we have Victor Capillo, who is a tech lawyer from Lomac Partners. Karibuni. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will go straight to you, uh, Walubengo. Uh, could you please tell us what, how do we define cybersecurity and how is cybersecurity different from information security? Okay, uh, basically cybersecurity is um, a subset of information security. So when we talk about information security, we are actually concerned about three main things. Uh, those are uh, confidentiality, issues, uh, integrity issues, and availability issues. With regard to confidentiality, we are uh, referring to you know, keeping your data or information uh, visible to only those people who are authorized to see it. That's confidentiality, and that's around where you get things like passwords, so that if you don't have a password, you can't you know, be able to see a particular type of data. With integrity, you want to increase trust in the databases, the information that is sitting in the database. Uh, for example, if, if it's, it's uh, your bank balance, and it's perhaps saying you have 100,000 shillings, and yet in your mind you expect it to have 200,000 shillings, so your bank balance should have integrity to the extent that it reflects um, the actual state of affairs with regard to that data. So integrity issues require that uh, the bank puts in place processes and structures to protect 
the data in order to make sure it reflects reality. Then the final one is availability. You know, confidentiality could be taken care of, integrity could be taken care of, but availability could be a challenge. If the servers are hacked and they go down, then you can't access your banking services. So that's how I would put it. That's how you define. Yeah. Um, I think, um, what is the current state of play uh, in terms of cybersecurity, considering that Serianu produces the cybersecurity <coughs> annual report every year? What are the issues we should be concerned with this year? So uh, in our most recent report, the 2018 report, we focused on two key areas um, that are prominent as far as um, state of cybersecurity. Uh, the heart of the report itself talked about uh, skills gap, whereas uh, our research has indicated to us that we require about 10,000 professionals in Kenya alone, yet we are on, only able to articulate about 1,700 certified professionals. And we draw a distinction, certification being going to class and learning and, and getting uh, the various acronyms that go with the type of expertise that you have gathered, but the skills which is acquired over time, we don't have enough people who have that exposure, that uh, understanding of how to configure this system securely and still remain available as uh, Walubengo has indicated and be able to operate and deliver to the business, deliver to the end user, deliver to the citizens on what they're able to do. So that's a key challenge uh, that, we are fo that we are facing in this region and in Africa as a whole, we do have a significant cybersecurity skills gap. Hand in hand in the, with that has been the cost of cybercrime. Uh, unfortunately, year on year, we have seen those numbers going up. In this last report, we articulated uh, $295 million, the equivalent of 29.5 billion Kenya shillings, which is a 40% increase as compared to 2017, <coughs> where we had 210 million, the equivalent of 21 billion Kenya shillings, lost through cybersecurity. Yeah, um, just to cut you, Cost of cybersecurity, can you quantify that in terms of um, figures that we can comprehend? You know, when you talk of billions, uh, we, you know, probably you need to tell us the amount that was lost is equivalent to okay. healthcare or, you know, it can run how many um, health centers or so that we're going to understand okay. the implications. Okay. I think the closest uh, statistic that I can share with that is. Uh, the cost of building the Thika Highway. I believe we put that number at about 30 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think that in last year alone we lost the equivalent of building Thika Highway, those numbers are significant. Um, if you think of the change that that highway has brought to the people who live around there and the growth that it has brought in, that in just pure loss is a significant amount of money to lose. Wow. Um, Kapio, you have uh, had uh, the, the losses that we are making. Who should be concerned about cybersecurity? Is it just the businesses? Because Madenge has mentioned the businesses. Um, is it the users of the internet who really should be concerned? Mm. Thank you very much, Grace, for that question. Everybody, everybody should be concerned. And when I say everybody, it's not just government, it's not just business, it is every single person in this republic from a two-year-old baby who has learned how to use a smartphone uh, to a 90-year-old woman in the village who uses M-Pesa. So every, it is everybody's responsibility. So people should not look at cyber security and only read security and think that it's a responsibility for national government. Everybody who uses any computer or information system has a responsibility to ensure the security of that system. And sometimes you might think that because you're not using it, then you're not affected. But you'll find that you're affected in one way or the other because um, you either your information is held in those uh, systems, services that you use on a daily basis are, are you know, controlled using those systems. So you will be affected. So for example, when M-Pesa was down for a couple of days or one day, or for those hours that it was down, even if you weren't using M-Pesa, you were still affected. Mm. So it's not just uh, those people who are actually actively using, but you might have been expecting some payment, or maybe your business relies on, 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 on M-Pesa, or you are, you know, you, you're, you're a trader, or whichever way you, you look at it, you'll end up being affected because 
uh, information security or cyber security essentially affects everybody. And so we must all do our little bit and um, ensure that it's safe and secure for everybody to use. And what is that little bit that we need to all do? Well, the whole concept essentially is the multi-stakeholder approach, where all stakeholders, based on their respective uh, capacities, are able to come together and put their heads together to ensure that the system works well for everyone. As you can even see, um, if you want, for example, to make a meal, um, you have to get the maize from the farmer, and he has to take it to uh, you know uh, the shop where you will buy it. It has to be brought to the house. You'll get water. You'll some there's somebody for who who knows how to cook, and at the end of the day. Um, the meal is made good when everybody does their part. And um, you cannot cook ugali if the farmer did not plant the seed. So you might, know how to, you might not know how to plant the maize, but you know how to cook it. So everybody brings in a certain value that helps the entire system. So if everybody did their little bit, then the system will be secure for everybody to use. So, so that so is what we try to advance also at the Kicktonet, that the multi-stakeholder approach is the best way uh, of securing our nation. Yeah, I wanted to add and say that uh, in terms of multi-stakeholders, the key actors are actually, um, you know, the personnel to begin with. Yeah, before yeah. You, 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 f you go further, Walubengo, mm. what is this multi-stakeholder regime? Maybe you need to tell us what it's all about, uh, then okay. go into explaining. So basically, uh, in real life, some problems have many facets or um, many aspects or dimensions that cannot be solved by one actor. And cybersecurity is one such um, an example. Cybersecurity is cross-cutting. It's not a problem for policemen, it's not a problem for bankers, it's not a problem for universities to train, it's not a problem for maybe regulators. Instead, it's a problem for all the above. So that requires that all the above and more come together in order to present a formidable solution. Because individually, you will not address that problem. And so to solve that problem, everybody, as Victor had said, has to come on the table. The professionals, uh, the legislature, they have to put in place the laws. And once the laws are in place, the policemen have to be trained. And after they've been trained, assuming they you know, arrest some cyber criminal, they, they have to take them to you know, the magistrates or the judiciary. And if the judges have no clue about these things, then you realize that this cyber criminal will actually be walking away free. So it's, it's, it's a multifaceted approach that requires uh, everybody to do their bit. As from the universities, we are also supposed to you know, pull up our socks and see if we can have more specialized courses around that space. Yeah. Thank you so much, Wal uh, Walubengo. Um, you have raised the issue, um, I think you raised the issue of uh, skills gap, yeah. and you have also raised the issue of the need of training our law enforcement. Would you consider that a challenge? Madenge? Well, building capacity is always a challenge, isn't it? You have to uh, present the material in a way that is simple for the person who doesn't know uh, to consume it and to understand it. There has to be an individual drive to want to learn the material. And then you have to continuously update it. It's, it's not building capacity to do anything, be it to dig a well, be it to train in cybersecurity. There is a back and forth between you who is building the capacity and those who are receiving it working in tandem so as to be able to deliver it. So uh, let's take this discussion in, in more than one instance. You have had us you know, pull back and define some of the terms that we're using. And the point is to make sure that the audience who are following along on this discussion, who are impacted by this issue, 
who face the loss either directly or indirectly have to understand that they are contributors in reducing that uh, attack surface, in reducing the ability of, 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 of losing out on it. So absolutely, that it's, it's not going to be a, a walk in the proverbial park in building that knowledge and capacity to everyone. There's back and forth between those who need to be taught as well as the ones who are teaching the material. And, uh, Let me, just on capacity building, uh, the other challenge is budgets. Companies, you know, private, public, they are always constrained in terms of money. So for you to build capacity, you need to have a budget for that. And most of the times, most companies would slash that budget or find ways not to use it. And increasingly, year in, year out, if you don't train your personnel, then your security is actually as strong as the weakest link, the, the lowest knowledge in terms of cyber security in organization. Mm -hmm. So that's a big challenge. How do we increase budgets for training? So, so let me actually even build on that further. On our report, as mentioned earlier on, we articulated total losses at 29.5 billion Kenya shillings. Uh, that broke down, to building, building thicker, thicker highway, highway. Mm -hmm. um, that broke down in a very interesting way. The actual direct losses, the actual money that made its way out of organization in that, that losses was significantly lower than the cost of recovering from oh. the loss itself. Mm -hmm. Because the organization has to invest in hiring consultants, in doing the forensic investigation, in buying the tools. Mm -hmm. The cost in you recovering and preventing a future loss tends to exceed the actual loss that you occurred at that point in time. So when organizations make the choice that we will not spend time to train our people, to invest in the technology, to do all these things, until they have a loss, that cost is much higher. Mm. Wow. And just maybe to add to you know, what Joseph is saying, <clears throat> one, of the thing, one of the reasons why even organizations are not investing in cybersecurity is because they don't see it as a priority. Yeah, and I think people need to make the distinction that when you have an IT officer, that person may not be an IT security mm -hmm. competent person. Yeah, yeah, and uh, sometimes you find in different organizations, whether they are companies, schools, or hospitals, the IT person is the one who just wipes the computers <laughs> and installs yes, uh, the antivirus, and that's it. But cyber security is more than that. Mm -hmm. And when organizations, the moment they will start to see the value of putting in place the right people for the right job, they will start seeing the value of strengthening their systems. Many organizations now are moving a lot of their services uh, to computer systems. And the only security they have is that antivirus, which perhaps is a free antivirus, <laughs> and which they downloaded for free. So they need to start putting their money where their mouth is. The moment you want to invest in a a computer system for any part of your business or whether it's your organization, then it's important to also put in the full framework. Yeah, don't just do half, because half measures will also result in bigger <coughs> losses. So I think if people took that into consideration, then they'd, they'd, they'd be uh, much better position. That, 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 that's a very uh, critical point, the fact that organizations need to invest in cyber, in, in, in protecting their systems, and even in, um, in cyber security. Uh, we are going to take a break, and uh, as we do that, we want to go to Jane to see what's happening on our social media handles. Over to you, Jane. Thank you, Grace. Now remember the hashtag for this show is Take On Tech. And you can also use our official station handle at KBC Channel One and my handle at Jane Boy, as well as my co on the other side of studio at G Githaiga. Quick commercial break. Um, we have uh, Jay Wanjiko saying uh, we need to bridge that gap through capacity building programs for the existing and young professionals in the industry. Uh, let me quickly see Cecilia Mount is saying uh, cybersecurity cuts across board and affects everyone um, who is in the value chain, of course. We have Tess Mutua saying cybersecurity disappropriately affects women. 
we asked to how do we protect women from attacks on systems that accelerate gender-based violence. All right. Um, she goes on to say there is a skill gap when it comes to cybersecurity here in Kenya. There are no enough professionals in this field to help bridge that gap. Let me see if we have another one. Um, just James uh, here appreciating the show. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. And uh, another one by Cecilia saying, you know, cybersecurity is a subset of information security, which is very critical when it comes to talking about um, the technological advancements that we are seeing here as a nation. So, you know, the whole issue of gender-based violence on the online platform has been brought about. The whole question of um, the gap that is there and the fact that there aren't enough of uh, professionals to help bridge that gap. Well, we'll be answering some of those questions when we come back from this commercial break, but don't go anywhere. Keep talking to us using the hashtag TakeOnTech. Uh, see you after this quick break. Uh, we'll be right back. For the face of tourism is fast changing and business tourism is becoming the new money-making venture. How is Kenya positioned to capitalize on this new trend? You know, as KICC, uh, we are maybe the largest stakeholder, but um, for the meetings, business events, or MICE stakeholders, uh, this is huge. This is something that's going to be able to catapult us to the next level. Um, of course, uh, we're the largest in East Africa, and um, in terms of the meeting venue at KICC, but in terms of driving the agenda of business events uh, moving forward. Join me, O'Brien Kimani, on this week's episode of Inside Government as we host KICC CEO Nana Gishaga on the future of business tourism in Kenya. Yeah, Many of us laugh about depression and we think it's funny, but you've made us realize that depression can become a real disease. 
because even my own family was saying, I, I'm, I'm pretending. My own, my own husband said, I'm also pretending. So this sickness is more of a pretentious disease than, a dis uh, than an, an illness that is really stigmatizing and discriminative on, on, on that aspect. And of course, now the other th there are other factors that contribute to getting to acute depression. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you discover you are depressed, how you try to cope with can actu actually escalate it faster. <laughs>
is sensitive to specificity or around gender. Uh, if they are social platforms, then are they, uh, do they have mechanisms through which um, if, for example, rights are violated, uh, rights of women are violated online, then the women who are using those platforms can have remedies uh, to prevent uh, them from being harassed online or things like that. Mm -hmm. But also, do we have sufficient laws that protect uh, women that they can actually go to a police station and complain about a specific violation uh, that has occurred online? Uh, you know, there are women who are in business. Their businesses are also vulnerable. And sometimes you find that they are even more vulnerable because the service providers are men. And sometimes you find that they might be taken advantage of and perhaps if we had more women in the sector, then women business leaders or women who run organizations can also invest in, in, in women ICT professionals and have them run their security, you know. And I think even over and above that, um, as even as tech is, as we design systems, we must also be sensitive to those uh, specific gender needs so that everybody feels welcome. The tech community shouldn't be like a man-only community. It needs to be open, they need to promote uh, technology uh, from a young age for, for, for young girls so that they also start playing with devices, not just playing with dolls, but can they also play with uh, technological devices so that as they grow up, they'll be able to get into it. I had sector. a question from Madenge. The 40% of uh, you know, women, was it deliberate or it just happened? By chance. Um, in, in the last uh, year alone, I'll talk about uh, I must have recruited seven or eight people to join, to join Syrian, and more than half of those ones were ladies. Okay. Mm, um, very capable, came across excellent in the interview, had the right credentials, and even as they have hit the ground, they have hit the ground running, made a major impact on the organization. Yeah. So it, it's by chance that there are that many, and, and, and we are excited. I mean, we sit there and we see that many women. I have two daughters, so I, I would like <laughs> to see them in a part of doing what I do. Yeah, All nice. right. Uh, back to you, Victor. Uh, from a policy, you talked about laws. Uh, so I am assuming I have uh, had um, a cybercrime committed. Say, you know, maybe somebody has moved money uh, from my account, and um, I, need, I need to know that I'm safeguarded. So from a legal and policy perspective, uh, what safeguards do we have well, in terms of cyber security? Uh, currently very little. Uh, sometimes I think you just have to uh, pray on the grace of God, depending on where your money is, which <laughs> network it is. Um, you know, now we can send uh, 234 when you send them pesa to the wrong person. Uh, previously that wasn't there, but it shows that um, intermediaries, that is whether they are banks or technology companies or financial institutions, are starting to be more proactive to provide mechanisms through which the people who use their services can get remedies. So if you send money to the wrong number, you can always get it reversed. But if the money has been taken out, then you're really stuck because um, we don't have the capacity to investigate post the money being withdrawn. So you see that is a challenge for law enforcement in terms of uh, how our police, for example, and our criminal investigations department are equipped to be able to follow and track and find the person. With mobile, it's sometimes easier because they have the number. Uh, banks sometimes is also easier because you went to the account and maybe the CCTV caught your face or something like that. But when it comes now to prosecution, how do you now trace uh, and link the person who took the money and the person who was sending? So there's a bit of a problem there because also we, our law hasn't taken into consideration the various types of offenses that have emerged uh, with the technology. So whereas in our law we look at it as generally fraud, but cyber fraud is a very unique aspect of fraud because the elements are a little bit different. And so proving them in a court of law also becomes problematic. And you, know, you can even look at an example of if you've ever gone to a police station, uh, have you ever seen a computer? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying this with all due respect to our law enforcement officers. At least I haven't been to a court If you go to a court station. <laughs> so I, I can't uh, yeah. really comment. Yes, and you know, it's, we currently have, I think, uh, let's say around about 20, um, uh, 20 staff at the, you know, 
CID department that deals with cybercrime, the cybercrime unit. Mm. 20 officers, a country with 45 million people. So you can see the capacity issues that we were talking about. That those capacity gaps exist at law enforcement level. They exist at banks because some of them have systems which uh, they cannot extract evidence from because they don't keep the right records that are needed to prove your case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you find that there are those specific challenges, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. I think there is uh, the, the parliament passed the, the Computer Misuse and Cyber Crimes uh, Act, which uh, tries to deal with some of these offenses, but not entirely. But you see, the law alone is not enough. What we're talking about, multi stakeholder. You need the law, you need mm. the officers so with the right skill, yeah. you need a cyber security professional to extract those messages, you need a judge or a judicial officer who is competent to understand and appreciate the evidence before, before them to make mm. the, right, the right decision. So even as much as um, there are things which are not working, there are a couple of, we are making steps to, to get there. In other words, we need uh, an entire ecosystem mm. uh, to deal with cyber, uh, cyber security. Uh, we are taking a short break and we just want to hear what, uh, what, uh, what's happening on, uh, on social media and Jane, take it away. It remains hashtag. Um, Tess Mutua is asking, you know, has Kenya reviewed criminal laws against vulnerable groups such as children and women to incorporate violations catalyzed by cyber attacks such as pedophiles and, you know, SGBV, that is uh, sexual uh, gender-based violence perpetrators? Um, there's also Wanjiko who says this need for the indoctrination of cybersecurity to the masses in terms of awareness. And Kibet actually echoes that when he says, you know, it is all about awareness and awareness. The weakest link to security is human, all right? Uh, hence, employees should be educated at all costs before anything else is done, at least in organizations. Um, uh, we have, uh, let's see. Um, Yes, Liz Rambo saying kudos to Syrian uh, uh, for bringing more women on board in much to do with cybersecurity and the tech community should start redesigning uh, systems with gender considerations and incorporate more women. So kudos to, you know, incorporating women in the cyberspace and helping um, create the awareness that is needed. But when it comes to the masses, awareness is what is really lacking. The hashtag still remains hashtag take on tech. Back to you, Grace. So much, Jane. Uh, as you have heard from um, our social media handle, uh, there's, uh, there are concerns about awareness uh, on cybersecurity. And uh, since we are almost uh, winding up the program, um, it needs you, you just need to give us like final word each, but addressing the issue of awareness. Uh, Walubengo, can you tell us something about social engineering? Okay. Social in engineering is basically um, a common approach that cyber crimes, uh, cyber criminals are using to sort of cheat the potential victim. Uh, typically, for example, you would get a call supposedly from a bank claiming that your account has an issue. Actually, let me use the example that happened to me. I got a call supposedly from Safaricom claiming that my SIM card has been registered twice. And so this caller wanted some clarification because uh, within 10 minutes they're going to switch both SIM cards off. So there I was trying to explain myself in order not to be switched off. And they were asking, you know, initially very soft question. Can you confirm your name is John Walubengo? Yes. Can you confirm that you are born on this date? Yes. So basically, they're building confidence with the victim. And eventually, they ask you for your PIN number. And that is what made me realize this is a hoax. So that's an example of social engineering. And Kenyans should be aware of such tricks in, and always be guarded so that they're not conned. Correct. Uh, Kenyans, you've heard uh, social engineering, don't give out your PIN. Don't let anyone tell you they are calling you from the mobile operator, mobile network operator to confirm your details because you already know you confirmed your details, Madenge. Maybe you can give us something about infrastructure, confidentiality of, uh, 
of our systems and uh, you could also focus on uh, mobile network operators. Very good. I'll build on uh, a comment earlier on made by uh, Walubengo that talked about um, cyber security, information security standing on three legs, which was on confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I will focus very strictly looking at infrastructure and the main things that individuals and enterprises need to work on, which is people, process, and technology. These are three legs of a stool, and all three must work in tandem. So organizations may turn around and spend and buy the top quality technology out there, but as mentioned by one of uh, the audience tweeting, if we don't be able to uh, train people to be aware about what's happening, then it creates a weakness. If you don't have a process to maintain that, it creates a weakness in the process. Um, so mobile operators, they need to spend time not only with their own employees, but also with the out end user, building on on creating that awareness that you should not share your own personal identifiable information to anyone because there's no reason why the uh, mobile operator should call you to ask you to verify for that kind of information. Uh, Victor, final word? I think like we've said, um, cyber security is everybody's responsibility. Uh, but at the same time, we must all take the responsibility for ourselves first uh, before uh, taking care of everybody's responsibility. So, Everybody needs to take charge of their own uh, cyber security and ensure that um, you know, everything is in order. And lastly, they need to take steps, like we've said, awareness is key, and everybody should not wait to be taught, but also go online and learn how to protect yourself and how to secure your systems. And if you find that there's nothing that you don't have, then put the money where your mouth is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, 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 we have been speaking about cyber security. Uh, the state of cybersecurity in Kenya, and this is on the program Tech on Tech. Uh, we had in the studio John Walubengo from uh, Multimedia University. We had Joseph Madenge from Serianu Cyber um, Cyber Outfit, and we had Victor Capio from Lomac Partners, who is a tech lawyer. On the social media, we had Jane Womboy, and I was your host, Grace Gidaiga. All right, thank you so much for being part of Take on Tech this evening. We do hope you have learned a thing or two and you enjoyed the discussion as much as we did here in studio. Be sure to join us again next week right here from 7.30 p.m. all through to 8.30 p.m. for another fantastic edition as we put focus on matters concerning technology here in Kenya and, of course, beyond borders. My name is Jen Wamboy. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing and have a lovely night. God bless.